His second straight game in a Nets uniform. Quick outlet to Hart. Finds Durant who throws it home with a right hand. Great find by Harden and KD delivered. James Harden looks like he hasn't missed a beat. <laughs> Guy just joins a bunch of new guys and the numbers are the same. Harden chased it down at the free throw line. Out to Durant. He buries a triple. And that was Mark Kestesher, the voice of the NBA Finals on ESPN Radio last night. Maybe, just maybe, the Nets will be working their way into the NBA Finals. 2-0 with Harden with the possible return of Kyrie on the way Wednesday when the Nets take on, coincidentally enough, his old team, the Cavs. It's Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, all guests on the Goodyear hotline, including the Super Bowl champion Jeff Saturday on the way this morning at 7.30. Okay, Jay, we're shooting the Jay. Last night, Harden was shooting it to the tune of 13 for 25. Had a great game coming off the triple-double. So we're going to have you figuratively shoot the Jay in Jay Shoot Will it! With the biggest stories in the league. Starting with Jay, we've seen some big threes that have been good before, but none maybe as good as the one we're about to see. We're, we're watching the Black Mob in Brooklyn. And this is the greatest scoring trio in the history of the game. Not sure that automatically translates to winning a world championship, but everybody on this team knows that KD is the most special talent on this team. James Harden, you will see him acquiesce. You will see Kyrie Irving when he, gets co when he comes back into this rotation this weekend versus Cleveland will be a guy that can score in isolated situations. But there's no doubt about it. They are the new villains of the NBA and actually think this trio being formed will make people actually root for LeBron James to a degree because people want, will want to see LeBron James take down maybe one of the greatest scoring trios we've ever seen assembled. Okay, so we have the great trio and maybe the duo of LeBron and AD. Many have rooted against them in the past, but maybe going up against this trio makes them the likable duo. Hey, you like what you see out of Joel Embiid this season, huh? I love what I see from Joel Embiid. Look, the one thing I do recognize because of this trade that potentially was on the line here with Ben Simmons, make no doubt about it, they're a Morgan company. They're building this team around Joel Embiid. This is Joel Embiid's team. Ben Simmons being on the trade block, and there, there's still potential guys out there for Philadelphia to go get. One that we'll talk about later on in this little session, but Joel Embiid is having a spectacular year, close to 50, 40, 90 season playing himself into the MVP conversation. He's lost weight. You ever heard him come out with immature comments? He's playing at a high level. This team is actually prone to do something pretty special in the Eastern Conference. I know Milwaukee will be there, but Philadelphia will be there at the end of the season as well. So 50, 40, 90, 50% from the field, 40% from deep. He's close to it, isn't it. Yeah, from the line. Incredible. And then we can't miss out on the one missing link for so many teams to maybe get over the top. Well, look, we, we've seen Anthony Davis get himself out of New Orleans. You watch James Harden get himself out of Houston. Bradley Bills next, y'all. Bradley Bills, probably one of the most gifted shooting guards there is in the league. Uh, Lee's game key. Uh, the guy doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective. The trade with Russell Westbrook coming there isn't really working out. Uh, they're off. They have the second worst record in the league. And Russ is having career lows in shooting from the field and shooting from the three-point line. Bradley Bill, if I'm Philadelphia or if I'm Milwaukee, I'm making calls to Washington. What do you want? What do you want, Washington? Because for Milwaukee, Bradley Bill could be the missing link to them actually winning the whole thing because of his ability to space the floor with Giannis Antetokounmpo. Key, what do you think about it? He mentioned your Lakers. He mentioned your new hometown team, the Brooklyn Nets. Well, uh, I'm still going with the Lakers regardless <laughs> in this situation. I think that when you talk about the the new big three, so to speak, in Brooklyn, I think that they, you first of all, you got to get Kyrie back. And once you get Kyrie back on the floor, then you can have the conversation about them potentially being one of, I wouldn't necessarily be as bullish as Jay, as the best three to ever face the, you know. Best the, scoring trio. Okay, best, best scoring, scoring trio. trio, trio See, ever. I still, man, them dudes up in Golden State still got me puzzled. With, with that, you know, Kevin Durant and Curry and, and Clay Thompson, that three was pretty lethal in terms of scoring, and they were winning chips at, that, at a clip that, you know, we hadn't seen in recent history. So I think that when you look at that, and then when you talk about the Lakers, the Lakers are just, you know, teetering along, although they did blow a 19-point lead last night to the Golden State Warriors. It happens when you win a lot, you get bored. 
And I think in that situation, they fell asleep at the wheel. They got bored and they wind up losing the game. But in the end, I look forward to seeing whoever comes out of the East against the Lakers. Make no doubt about it. The Lakers are better this year than what they were last year. Absolutely. And that's insane to even think for a second. And look, people have LeBron James fatigue. And people get tired of talking about LeBron James winning championships and is he the greatest ever and Anthony Davis because now there's a new shiny object and that's on the East Coast in Brooklyn. But by the way, the Lakers have the best record in the entire NBA. Uh, they've been just putting in work silently. And as long as they're there at the end of the day, that's all that matters for LeBron. You know, it, watching four quarters of Laker basketball has been, for me as a, as a lifelong Laker fan, like you said, though, Jay, it's been like, Fatigue, like I expect for them to win. I expect for them to, even if they lose a game, it's like, okay, well, all right, they lost four games this year, big deal. All right, they lost three, big deal. Like, like, okay, so what? That doesn't mean in the end they're not going to be in a championship. That's it's like Pat Mahomes you know, losing to the Raiders, Key. They're like, uh, all right, well, they, well, no, well, they, well, they lost the game, but yeah. I mean, who's not, who's not expecting the Kansas City Chiefs to be in the Super Bowl? That's how we look at it. Last couple of things I would add, the hype train. You think the hype train is big right now. Obviously, we'll wait till the return of Kyrie Irving to see them in their fully formed, most talented trio, scoring trio, as Jay said. But they're 2-0 and out of the gate. Magnificent performances from both Harden. He has opened up something else in Durant, which is scary to think considering how talented he is. He had 42 alongside Harden, 30 last night. By the way, they're scheduled the rest of the month at the Cavs in back-to-back games. That's going to happen. Against the Heat, in back-to-back games at Atlanta, Oklahoma City, and Washington. None of those teams are playing great basketball right now. I mean, they could run out of the gate with a huge start and build the hype. The last thing I would say, fellas, is the one thing I mentioned about this guy and what makes him unique. He's 31 in the prime of his career, one of the best scorers of his generation, but doesn't have the chip. Kevin Durant can always say, I got multiple chips, and I think it's fair to say, Jay, I don't know if you would agree, he outplayed LeBron James in those two NBA Finals where the Warriors won. Kyrie Irving hit one of the biggest shots in the history of the NBA Finals. By proxy, that would be one of the biggest shots in the history of the NBA when he won the championship for the Cavs. Those two can always say, we got those, and Harden is dying to join that club. I I, I agree with you, Zubin, to a degree, but I will say this. um, Golden State even though Kevin Durant got two-time finals MVP, that's Steph Curry's team. Mm. That's his team. This is different. This is KD's basketball team. And now that you have James Harden and Kyrie Irving, uh, you know, Kyrie won one on LeBron's team, right? So I, I think this is a chance, and James has never won one. James has been up three to one against you know, Golden State, and they lost that lead with CP3. So I think this is a redemption tour for all three of these guys to say, this is ours that we can get on our own. I I think Brooklyn will will win one. I just don't think it'll be this year. I don't think it'll be this year. I think they'll get one, but it won't be this year. Is it championship or bust, though, in the minds of many? It wouldn't be for you because you're saying play the long game, get that title, the long-awaited title. But for many people, Jay, right, the expectations have just gone through the roof. Well, it, it is it, it is championship or bust. I just think that the other team on the other side, like Jay mentioned on the, in the West Coast, the Lakers are better than they were last year, and they won last year, and they're better. So that would automatically tell you that they probably are win again this year or they should win against this year. You you got a lot of you got a lot of great things on the offensive end for the Brooklyn Nets. But on the defensive end, because you got to play both ways at some point, that, that I think that, that essentially will be the problem. You can't just outscore your opponents all the time. You're going to have to stop them at some point. Key, isn't it interesting, though, with LeBron James? Think about like some of the, the top players in the game. If you have LeBron, KD, and then you have Giannis, how expectations are a little bit different. With LeBron, championship or bust, that's every year. Right. Uh, with KD now back with this team, even if it was just him and Kyrie, there was still a feeling of championship or bust. With Giannis, almost in a way, you're wondering, is it just get to the world championship? It, just getting to the game. It doesn't feel like it's championship or bust for the back to back MVP and the reigning defensive player of the year, which is interesting when you just look at the three and how you dissect the three. Well, it, it starts off by how those other two have approached the game. Not just the game of the NBA, but the game of life, right? Meaning that everything is on LeBron's watch. Everything is on KD's watch. They do what they want to do when they want to do it. And because of that, people don't like it. So they want to set certain expectations for two of the all-time greats. 
where Giannis is beloved. It's kind of like we like him. We just want to see him get to a championship and win it, even though he's two-time defensive player of the year, two-time MVP. We just kind of, you know, he's a nice guy, and, and it's oh, okay. The nice guy comment. Yeah. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. No, I hear you. That, well, and, I think that's, that's the problem, that's though, right? the way. Now, if he said, I want out Milwaukee, I don't care. Get me out of here. I'm going to Miami. I don't know. Then people will be like, take a different approach. But because LeBron has done so many things in the eyes of the haters to get to L.A., to get to Miami, to leave Cleveland the way that he left, KD left the team in OKC with a little bit of a riff with Westbrook to go to a team that just beat him in a championship in Golden State. And then all the, the uh, what the heck do you call it? The, the, when you, the Twitter trolls? The, yeah, that stuff. The <laughs> Twitter trolls, the burner phones, all that is a storyline that creates this kind of like, I don't know, dislike for KD. When really we should be really liking what he does on the basketball court and not caring about anything else. But because he's so polarizing, this is why you get the reaction that you get from those two guys versus a guy like Giannis. It almost feels like you're waiting to watch Giannis go through that metamorphosis that LeBron and KD went through from, hey, I'm the best in the game to being the villain to coming back and still saying I'm the best in the game. It just feels like when you watch Giannis and his trajectory with Milwaukee, like, he is that nice guy. And you're waiting for him not to be the nice guy in order to grab the championship trophy and say, give this damn thing to me. It's mine. And you have to have a little bit of that mentality to do so. Last thing I would say, and this just goes to show where the NBA is this particular season with fans or very limited fans or no fans. Keys Lakers are the only team in the NBA right now that has double-digit wins. They're 11-4, and but have you noticed they're 7-0 and on the road and 4-4 and at the Staples Center? That, more than anything, tells you fans matter, and it's just an interesting dichotomy. The Lakers' best record in the league, but playing 500 ball at home. Can't wait till the fans can get back there and cheer on every of the 30 teams. Keyshawn J. Will Zubin presented by Progressive Insurance with insurance for cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and commercial vehicles at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and progressive.com. In one minute... Who does Key think is the best quarterback left in the playoffs?